Hello everyone! In this video is the finale, the trilogy, the one to end all things. <laughs> Part three of the journey through my stroke. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to go watch the other two videos to understand. Please, please, now, go now before you watch this one. And then come back and watch this one. Did you do it? Oh wait. You do it? Okay, good. Let's go. Probably the biggest mystery was why I actually had the stroke in the first place. The only thing that would have caused it was I was taking birth control, like the pill kind, to regulate my periods. It releases hormones into your body, which my body obviously couldn't handle that. It's a very rare side effect, so don't worry too much about it. I don't want to scare anyone into, you know, not taking it or getting off of it. I was only on it for a year, but now I have a birth control that doesn't have any hormones in it to avoid having another stroke. <laughs> that was all kind of TMI, so sorry if I made anyone uncomfortable. Anyway, picking up where I left off, I finally got home to see my family. I also texted Joey and was like, Oh hey, I'm headed home! And he sped down to my house as fast as he could, which was a speed limit. But when he got there, he was like, What the <coughs> happened? Please, are you okay? I've been so worried! Huh? What? Oh. Yeah, I'm okay. What? Obviously, he was worried, and the only thing he knew about the situation was from a friend of my mom's that told him, Oh yeah, Kelsey is like really sick, and she went to the hospital. Did you not know? I remember I tried to text him when it first happened, like before I even went to the clinic, and it took all my energy to focus and click the right letters on my phone. When I finally got off ICU and went into the normal hospital room, I called him like, ah, Hi, baby. Kelsey, what happened? What's going on? I'm, o I'm okay. I had a stroke. A what? Okay, I gotta go. Bye. -bye. So when I finally got home, I was able to tell him everything. That everything included the prescription I had to be on after all that mess. And that was a little thing called Levinox. Now, Levinox is a blood thinner shot that I had to take every 12 hours for six months! The instructions to take the shots was to take them in fatty areas, mostly like your stomach, about two inches away from your belly button. You pinch your skin and just... You just, you just stab it. Then not too fast, you squeeze that thing juice into your body. Now because I cannot handle doing that to myself, my mom had to do it. And my dad. And then when my parents weren't home, my brother had to do it. But Kelsey, what if you went out with friends or out with Joey on a date? Great question. I made them do it. <laughs> Sleepover? Had to trust my friends to do it. Date? Had to show Joey how. It sucked so hard, bro. They hurt so bad that sometimes I would cry. Over time, I kind of got used to it, though. Like, enough not to cry. In the beginning, it went along the lines of, uh, Okay, am, am, I, am I pinching it too hard? No? No? Uh, okay, I gotta... Wait, is that bubble supposed to be there? Let's, let's Google it real quick. Okay, okay, it's fine. Now I just... I just got... I just got a... <coughs> this is over... <laughs> few more seconds. <laughs> and then it eventually became, where don't you have a bruise? Here? Okay. Okay, you're good. And if you didn't know what a blood thinner does to your body, let me tell you that. Say you get a paper cut. You'll then proceed to bleed to death. <laughs> it takes so much longer for your body to scab because, you know, your blood is a skinny legend. Also, you bruise so easily. I looked like I was on drugs, like around my stomach, where I got the shots. It looked like a clock with a bruise for every number. <laughs> and eventually it became hard to find a place to like put my medicine in. So in my last video, I told you school started two days after I got back. And let me tell you, that was rough. It, it was rough. It was the first day of my senior year and I didn't know what to expect. But apparently the school was notified on my whole stroke situation and all my teachers were sending out an email about it. So imagine this. I'm in English, Hunter's English, <laughs> not to brag or anything. <laughs> and things are going pretty good so far. It's just like the first day. So it's like, oh, here's our syllabus. But then 
Okay, now get out your journal and write at least a page about your summer. <laughs> Thinking, okay, this should be easy enough. To write this, okay, everything is fine, everything. Okay, put your journals away, let's- I wrote four lines. I start crying. I start crying, okay? I have tears in my eyes. I'm starting to sob in class, first day. Woo! What a nice- Nice first impression. After that class, my teacher actually took me into the back of her room and gave me like a really touching pep talk before I left for my next hour. And it made me feel like so much better about everything that I never cried about it again. In school. I think. You know what? That's probably a lie. I probably cried a lot. Um, right now I'm graduated and throughout the year I've improved a ton. I believe that I've finally moved on from it. Anyway, back to the stroke. <laughs> Even though I got out of the hospital, I had to get many checkups. My primary care doctor said I could have a heart murmur. But then in the next few visits, he said he couldn't hear one. So he was like, you're fine. Another big thing I was worried about was driving. Because I just had a stroke. I have my license. Can I keep it? When I asked the nurse in the hospital before I went home, she was like, driving? Are you serious? Girl, you just had a stroke! Well, I guess if you really want to, you can take a driving simulation. It's down the road. Man, okay, so this place is in the city. I live in a remote area. The roads are not as crazy as they are in the city, okay? When I went to my primary care doctor, which is a lot closer to where I live, and when I asked him about driving, he was like, what? Psh, yeah, yeah, you probably can. Just wait a couple weeks. I don't know. Okay. The reason I had to get checkups like every week was because they were looking for the right dose of Lovinox to give me. For the longest time, my blood was too thin and they had to get it to the, like, right level. How did they find this out, you ask? More blood tests. More needles. I couldn't have a break. Nearing the end, I got a few more MRIs because they wanted to see if my blood clot was gone or if I'd gotten any smaller. It did get smaller, but it never went away. From what I understand, the clot is covered in a film so blood can pass through it. Then after like six months, what's left of it turns into a cement-like chunk in my brain. So yeah, still got that in there. Finally got to my last doctor visit. Back to the five-star hospital I go, another three-hour drive. But it'll all be worth it because when I get there, the doctor will tell me I don't need these stupid blood thinners anymore and I won't be covered in bruises and I won't bleed to death over a paper cut. Um, so we actually need a different blood test than the last one you took. So I can't tell if you can get off your prescription. But you can take it here and then I could meet you again in a few days or I could call you. <laughs> Sweetheart, I know it sucks, but just a few more days and you'll be finished. Mom was right. After about five days, they called and said I wouldn't need my shots anymore. What a relief. But it still doesn't end there. My school had our senior trip to an amusement park. Pretty fun, right? Well, we were all terrified about what would happen if I were to ride a roller coaster with a lot of G-force because of that cement rock in my brain. It could rock around and mash all my brains up. I actually don't know about that, but I went. I just didn't ride any big rides, which sucked because I actually do like riding roller coasters, but I'm glad I went anyway. Also, along with roller coasters, my mom was worried about me flying because we had a trip to Mexico planned. They said I would be fine as long as I get up and move my legs around. Mexico was super fun, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Speaking of future videos, Joey has a video of us playing Minecraft. I yell a lot. Next video will be about me moving out because um, this is the first video that I'm recording that's not at my house. So that's something. Story about moving out, that'll be fun. Um, so I guess this ends a long series of stroke stuff. 
If you made it this far, thank you so incredibly much, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you in my next video, whenever that is. Bye-bye!